Welcome to the tutorial 3D Camera Motion. So this is the exciting tutorial where you finally get to see your 3D setup at play. We're going to actually move a camera throughout your 3D scene and you'll see just how amazing it looks um, through the perspective of a moving camera. So to begin, let's add a camera to our scene. And we can do this by clicking on this plus button here and then selecting camera. The camera is usually added to the bottom of the stack. Okay, I think I know what's going on here. So let's go to the network view for a moment. Okay, so here we have camera underscore one. So I think what's going on is that every time I add or delete a camera from my timeline, even if I don't see it, it's still there. And if your scene is selected to default camera, you might not see it in the timeline view. So the camera we just created is camera underscore one. So we're going to select that. Um, and the reason that you don't see it in the timeline view is because you can only ever see one camera at a time in the timeline view. But the reason you have multiple cameras is you can film from multiple perspectives um, and then decide, okay, I'm going to actually render um, all the filming I did from camera one and not two, for example. So you have that option. So let's go back. And there you go. So now at the bottom of our timeline stack, we have camera one. So select camera one and then um, click on this button here, which will automatically add a parent peg to your camera. And then double click on your camera's peg. And from here, you have to once again, enable the 3D option. And this time, instead of selecting Euler angles, leave it at quaternion angles for your rotation. And this will give us nice, smooth rotations for any type of rotational movement that we're going to have to make with our camera. So I'm just going to close that. Now what I'm going to do is add a keyframe on the first frame of the camera peg. And you can obviously do that in several ways. I'm going to right click and say insert keyframe, but of course you can use the keyboard shortcut F6 or command F6. Um, if you have your timeline view toolbar up, uh, you just use the KF button for keyframe to insert a keyframe. Then I'm going to scroll all the way to the end of my scene. Then I'm going to go over and click on the um, animate mode, which means that any movements I make in this last frame position will now be recorded um, as a keyframe. Then I'm going to turn on the camera cone in the perspective view, so that's what it looks like. Um, and let me rotate a little bit so you can see what that looks like. There you can see that's what you would see filmed. And it's actually through the camera view that you can actually see in the render mode what would be in your um, camera frame. So this would be the shot. And so because we need to use the camera so much, what I'm going to do is actually drag it over and put it here so we can look at what's going on through the camera at the same time as um, making all our movements in the perspective view. And I'm just going to go back to the open GL mode because it's a bit faster to see um, movements that we've made with the camera. So now that we have everything set up, what I'm going to do is switch to the rotation tool. And I'm going to grab this green circle so I can make a very uh, precise movement and just make a rotation. And I'm watching also in the camera view because we we're already starting to see some of this balcony which we don't really want to see because it shouldn't we shouldn't be able to see the inside of the sort of cutout balcony so I'm going to switch to the translation tool and then I'm going to select this red arrow in the camera view and then use it to drag the frame over a bit so there so that we don't have the balcony in our shot and actually lower it a bit as well because As you can see, part of the roof is getting cut off, and I'm going to go to the render mode to see if the shot looks good. So it's not bad. You see a little bit of a corner here, but I'm going to do it quickly uh, just for the sake of an example. So that's not bad. Um, and then I probably have the same problem for my first keyframe. Actually, it's not bad. So we'll go from this rotation all the way along. Um, this view so it's 
you know, less than a 45 degree rotation, but not bad. So in order to see a playback of your 3D scene, you have to enable it um, for the perspective view. So to do that, you have to go to play, enable playback, perspective view. And now you can use the playback button um, properly to see an, a real-time playback. Okay, so it's actually quite a slow-moving playback. Um, I think it's because it takes over 130 frames to make a, a less than 45 degree rotation. So you can always um, click and drag this keyframe closer to your starting keyframe to make that rotation a little bit quicker. But you understand what's going on, so um, that's basically how you would keyframe and make a camera movement in your 3D uh, model. So just in case you were wondering for the background, I haven't put in the balcony, I didn't build it in 3D yet, um, but if you remember we had a bunch of mountains and uh, uh, birds and things like that which I kept in the background layer. I think right now they're probably being a little bit misplaced. Yeah, they, they actually cut through the scene so I would have to drag them back and uh, perhaps scale them. But what you can do if you're worried about the sky cutting off like this um, for your background, there are two things you can do. You can simply extend the length of this blue rectangle that I've used for my background. So if it's very, very, very long from the top view. So I think right now it's this piece right here. So if you drag it out and extend it quite far on both sides, even when you're making a rotation, you'll still see it all the way out here. So it would continue along this way and come all the way here. And then you should probably make it quite a bit wider or taller height-wise so that from any angle it's always going to be seen as a background no matter how you rotate. Um, the other thing you could do is add a color card um, and color it light blue so that you always see a light blue background no matter where you are where, wherever you're filming and you do that by going to um, this plus this add layer button again and then selecting color card and then double clicking on your color card and changing the color. So those are two things you can do for something like that. So I brought up these background elements because I'm actually going to use them for the next part of this tutorial, which is to show you how to add an ortho lock. And a problem that occurs when you do camera rotations for 3D, and you may have guessed this, is that anything that's in 2D looks like a flat piece of paper rotate. So in order to prevent this from happening, what we do is we're going to add an ortho lock to the layers in our scene um, which will be involved in the 3D rotation. And what that does is it locks those elements to the camera's rotation. So it'll rotate with the camera so it always looks um, like its front is facing the camera. However, it's just for the rotation and not for the position or the zoom. And that's actually good because if it also followed the position the zoom, these flat 2D images would get distorted. So maybe I'll just use one of the mountains as an example and hide everything else. So let me show you through a 3D rotation what I'm talking about. As we go this way, eventually if we go far enough, it's actually not so bad in this example, but if we go far enough you're going to really start to see um, it look like a flattened piece of paper. I wonder if I should pull my rotation even further just to, to give you the, the proper example. So from here you're starting to see a pretty crazy distortion. This doesn't look like our mountain here. Um, it is really starting to look like a flattened piece of paper. So what we're going to do is add an ortho lock to our mountain. So 
So let's go to the network view. And actually I need the module library. We're going to go to the move tab. And from the move tab, we're going to select ortho lock and drag and drop it into our network view. And I'm going to make my network view full screen. And we're going to, actually I should have brought it into my BG layer. And cut this and voila paste it in here and so now what we're looking at is the mountain so what we're going to do is um, use our alt to drag the ortho lock over our mountain and that's all you really need to do so let's go back to the camera view And this time, when we play our rotation, let's go back to the front here. Actually, something looks a little weird here because the camera and the camera cone are in black, and we didn't see a reverse rotation as I scrolled backwards. So I'm just going to check something out. Yeah, and it looks like here that the camera came off its peg for some reason. So let me just hook that back on, and now this is all in fuchsia again, so this is perfect. Um, and let me click on the play button so that we can view the ortho lock. So as you can see here, it almost looks like it's, well it is in fact, rotating uh, with the camera. And by the time you get to the end position, it's actually um, it looks exactly as it did before. I just want you to see what it looks like. It's actually cutting through the screen here, so it's partially hidden. But you get the idea that it still looks exactly the same as it did um, on the first keyframe. It's always facing the camera no matter what. The one thing I did want to mention quickly is that when using an ortho lock with symbols, because we did use a few symbols um, in this setup, you can't have your ortho lock inside the symbol group um, or attach any of the drawing elements inside the symbol group. Um, it won't be recognized, so you really have to put it in the root scene for it to be recognized by the camera. So uh, you get the idea of what the ortho lock does. Um, and how you can use it in 3D rotation um, for your 3D space. So that's it for the tutorial 3D camera motion. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Managing a Network with a 3D Scene Setup.